All right, welcome everyone. This is Soapboxiology. I'm Pastor Gabe, and today we're going to be finishing up our little short series on the deity of Christ. I know I've already done a deity of Christ one, but this uh, question that came up, I wanted to just address it in a little bit more detail with a lot more texts looking at. So we looked at first, when did Jesus say he was God? Then we looked at who is Jesus? What's the picture of God that we get in the Bible? Just the description and the way that he identifies himself. And there's way more that we could have done in that. It's just a short little sampling. And then today is the question of worship. So if Jesus is God, then does he get worship? Is that appropriate? Or do we only worship God the Father? What does that look like? Don't we hear passages of people saying uh, of certain times where it's inappropriate to worship? So let's look at a f- several texts to draw this out. So I want to begin here in, let's see, Revelation 9. Actually, we'll look at uh, Revelation 22, 9. Okay? So John is seeing the vision, right? He's seeing this amazing uh, revelation. <laughs> and he's just overwhelmed and he falls down in front of the angel who's sharing all of this information with him. He's overcome and he starts to worship him. So verse 22, I'll pick it up in 8. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Only God gets worship. Not angels. Not even angels when they're showing incredible visions and it's overwhelming to, to, uh, to humans, to John. Not appropriate to worship anyone else other than God, even an angel. So let's look at uh, this happens again in Revelation 19 earlier. Uh... We'll start in 19.9. And the angel said to me, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the, these are the true words of God. Verse 10, Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So twice John is rebuked for trying to worship an angel. You know, maybe it's a little bit understandable when he's seeing these incredible things, these incredible visions, these incredible acts before him, but he should know you only worship God. So then I wanted to point a little, something like this happens in the book of Acts. The, uh, the disciples are performing signs and miracles. This is Acts 10, 26. Um, on the, I'll, I'll start in 24. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and called them together, and his relatives were close. When Peter entered, entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. So he's worshipping Peter now. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up. I, too, am a man. In other words, don't worship me. I'm, I'm, I'm a man like you. I, I'm the same as you. Men do not receive worship. Angels do not receive worship. It's entirely inappropriate. So this is the, the testimony that we're seeing consistently throughout Scripture. Uh, let's see. I think there's one more I wanted to look up. Luke. Is it? Let's see. Luke 4. Oh, Luke 4, 8 and, and Matthew 10. Uh, Matthew 4, 10. This is both when uh, the temptations of Christ and Jesus is being told to, to uh, worship Satan, okay? So you don't, well, you don't worship men, you don't worship angels, and you don't worship Satan. So let's see what Jesus replies to him. He's tempting him with all of the kingdoms and authority of the world. And Jesus responds, verse 8 in Luke 4, And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So now, he, so Jesus is clarifying for this. You don't just not worship angels. You don't just not worship Satan. And you don't want not worship men. You worship God only. And this is the mouth of Jesus. Jesus says this in both Luke 4, 8 and Matthew 10, 4. You only worship God. Only God receives worship. Now, now we know this, but we're just seeing this laid out through scripture. Okay, so we worship God only. Uh, And we're seeing examples of of other times when other people were tempting and it was inappropriate. So now let's look at some Old Testament now to to draw this this idea out. So we're going to go over to Isaiah. And let me see, what did I have? Isaiah 42. Uh, The 40s in Isaiah are just really rich with the identity of God and prophecy and the way that he acts within the world. So uh, here's, here's... 
God speaking, Isaiah 42, 8, says, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. I mentioned this last time. God doesn't share his glory. So Jesus just said, the Lord, God, is the only one you are to worship. And here God is saying, I am the Lord, that is my name, I give my glory to no other. So it's inappropriate for you to worship anyone else because they don't get my glory, nor my praise to carved idols. So idols don't get worship. This is, again, we talked about this last time where the commandment is don't make any carved images. But he's the Lord and he does not share his glory with anyone. And then you have the Shema, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, Deuteronomy 6.4, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. So if there's only one God, then only one God should be getting all of our worship as we're adding all of these things together. So let's jump back to uh, the New Testament in Matthew. So we know no one else is supposed to be worshipped. We know there's only one God. We know God doesn't share his glory. We know it's inappropriate to worship anything else. So then let's look in the New Testament. What happens? Matthew 4, let me see, 14, what do I have? 14.33. I have a bunch of text here that I need to, to get through. If I was really good, I would have a system that shows it on the screen, but I, I, my computer is not fast enough to do that. It looks pretty bad. One day, hopefully I'll get that. So this is when, uh, when Jesus was walking on the water. Our, uh, yeah, so Jesus immediately, so Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. And at first they freak out. They're like, it's a ghost. Okay. But uh, so Peter walks out. He begins to see the storm. He starts to sink. And Jesus, verse 31 and 14, Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and took hold of him. And says, why did you doubt, oh, you of little faith? Verse 32, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Verse 33, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. They worshipped him. Now Jesus himself has already told us, You are to worship God only, and him alone do you serve. And we're told God is one, and he doesn't share his glory with another. And we've already told you don't just worship men, you don't worship angels, and you certainly don't worship Satan. And here it is, God, Jesus giving it away. Jesus uh, does this amazing miracle. He calms the storm and the disciples all immediately worship him. And Jesus does not rebuke them. He doesn't do what the angel does. He doesn't remind them that they're only to worship God. He accepts the worship. Very interesting. He accepts the worship. He already knows you're only supposed to worship God and yet he accepts worship. <clears throat> okay. Uh... Matthew, where was I? 28, 9. Okay. So this is getting ready for the, the um, Great Commission. Jesus comes back. He's appeared many times to the disciples. Um, verse 8, 28, 8 of uh, Matthew. So they departed quickly from the tomb and feared with great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. Okay, so this after the resurrection. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Well, they never re record what Jesus says afterwards. Okay, verse 10. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and they there will see me. Again, he doesn't refuse the worship. He doesn't tell them that's inappropriate. He doesn't tell them you shall worship God only. You don't worship men or angels or Satan. He doesn't say any of these things. He accepts worship. And God himself taught. Jesus himself taught. Uh, only God receives worship. So let's look at, let's look at another one of these texts. Let's see, I think I have Luke here. Yeah, Luke, Luke 24, Luke 24. So the, this is also the end after the resurrection, 24, 52. Um, so this is right before the ascension. And he led them out as far as Bethany and was lifted up in his hands and he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them as he was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and then returned to Jerusalem, Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continuing in the temple, temple, blessing God. So again, at the ascension, right after the resurrection, they see him and they worship. They see him doing a miracle in the water, they worship him. At the ascension, they worship him, and he doesn't shout down from the sky, hey, that's inappropriate, only God gets worship. You don't worship men, you don't worship angels, you don't worship Satan. But Jesus keeps accepting worship. Why is he doing this? It should be obvious, right? And God has already told us he does not share his glory. He will not share his glory with another. 
So why is Jesus accepting worship? Maybe there's something we're supposed to be noticing about Jesus. So uh, here's another story in John 9. He, I believe this is the healing of the blind man, right? Uh, yeah, he was cast out of the synagogue for telling them that he thought Jesus was a prophet. So verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? This is Jesus' favorite description of himself. And he says, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. So again, Jesus is the Son of Man. It's very clear. And then verse 38, he says, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him. Jesus responds, For judgment I came into this world, that those who, who do not see me may see, and those who may see, those who see may become blind. He doesn't say, Don't worship me. He says, I'm come, I've, I've come to see. I've come into the world to help those that are going to see me to see me. And other people who think they know better, think they know that there must not be a son, that there must not be a trinity, that God cannot be Father, Son, and Spirit. They'll remain blind. It's a great teaching. You should look at uh, John 9 sometime. Maybe I'll, I'll do, a, do a video on that one. Okay, John 20, 28. Okay, so this is, this is the... Uh, we, we referenced this before where John, where uh, Thomas wanted to see. He said, I'll never believe unless I see the scars in his hand and the spears in his side. We referenced this before in a, in a video in the series. So Jesus comes into the room and he says, put, verse 27, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place them in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, which basically is a description of him worshiping. It's like, my Lord and my God. Amazing. He's declaring who Jesus is, worshiping him. And again, he doesn't say, don't call me that. It's not who I am. No, he says, have you believed because you have seen me? Right? You've, you're getting it. You're believing correctly. That's what you're supposed to get. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Now, so there's all this picture in the Bible. God is one. And this is why we have the idea of the Trinity. Because we don't want to say God is not one. God is one, but he has three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'll do something on the Holy Spirit in the future to bring him into the picture. But the idea is... So we don't ever want to say that God is not one. He's two or three or whatever. No, God is one, but he has three persons. And this is how we understand the Trinity. Because God, the Father, is clearly God, but Jesus, the Son, is clearly God, and he's accepting worship. God doesn't share glory, so they have to be one. Right? God said you, Jesus said you should only worship God, but he accepts worship. So they're one, right? But they're separate. This is what we have to understand. But why? Why is this important? Why is it important to worship Jesus? Because this is what we are supposed to do. So let's look at just a couple texts to draw this out. John 5, 5.23 says this. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. Uh, did I, what did I say? 26. 5.23. That was 22. That all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. But I thought God doesn't share his glory. Why is his honor at all related to the Son? Because they're one. Because they're both God. We cannot miss this. This is the way that the, Jesus is being presented to us in the scriptures. Let's jump, jump over to another one. 14, same book, John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Remember, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you want to know Father, if you want to know the God, if you want to know who God the Father is, you have to come through the Son. They're one. They don't share their glory. You don't worship anyone else. To come to the Father is to come through Jesus. This is the consistent testimony in scripture it's it, it's something we get and we begin to understand as a development over time but he is one he is one but that includes the son and the spirit so here again jesus talking in matthew eleven twenty seven. 27 all things have been handed over to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father and no one knows the father except the son 
and any and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. So again, there's this exclusivity of Father and Son. They're the only ones that know one another. They're the only ones that grant access to one another. They're the, they're the only ones who have knowledge of one another. And so without the Son, we don't have the Father. This is the clear teaching of the New Testament, which is really important and really important for our Jewish friends to understand. They think they're worshiping, but they're rejecting the Messiah. They're rejecting the one that was sent. That they're, they rejected the coming image that they were eventually supposed to look at. The reason you weren't supposed to create an image because God was sending one. Luke 10, 22. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son. No one who is who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So it's similar to what I just read. But there's this idea um, that there's this exclusivity of the Father, and there's access only through the Son. This is why we say there's no other name under, under heaven by which man must be saved, as they say in Acts 4. Uh, this is the, the consistent message of the disciples. The only way to be saved is through Jesus, recognizing who he is, recognizing that he is God, even though God is one, recognizing that they share glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, therefore they're one. They all accept worship, therefore they're one, even though God is one. This is why we have the idea of the Trinity. It's the best way that we, have, we know to explain the way that God is presenting himself in the scriptures. So it's very much appropriate to worship the Son and the reason we do that is because that's how we get, come to know the Father and truly who God is in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the Trinity. So this is just a small, you know, smidgen of scratching the surface of these texts and going in depth in them. But that's what this channel is about. Uh, I don't want to do hour-long teachings. I don't have time for that. But I do want to bring the scriptures to you and see what they present about Christ. So I hope this small little series has helped. Jesus is God. God is one. Jesus is, one, is God, God the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. That's the way the Bible presents him, and that's the understanding we have to come to in order to worship God. So I hope this small series has been helpful. Worship Jesus, and you'll find the Father. Thank you guys so much.